You're looking at a Mercedes-Benz 722.315 automatic transmission, which was used on most of the turbo diesels from the early to mid 1980s. That's a lot of vehicles and a lot of these vehicles are still on the road and people are trying to maintain these old transmissions. And one of the problems you have with them are leaks, pesky little leaks, usually due to dried or hardened O-rings. So what I'm gonna do in this video is just show you a few of the smaller type leaks that you can fix yourself. Some of them you can do with the transmission in the car. Maybe a couple of them you can't do. You have to remove the transmission from the car. I've already started cleaning this area. I thought, oh, I'm gonna jump in right now and explain anytime you're working around a transmission trying to remove some component that exposes the internal part of the transmission, you wanna clean it thoroughly. I went off camera and thoroughly cleaned these areas that I'm going to replace the seals on. The reason I did that, it's kind of time consuming, so I will give complete instructions in the video that comes with the kit on the cleaning procedures that I use. But it's real important that you get clean around in the area where the hole is going to be exposed when I pull this modulator out of the side of the transmission housing. So if you look over here, here's what's in the kit. This is what I call the basic nuisance seal leak kit, all right? It contains four sealing rings for the banjo bolts. And these are the bolts that hold the lines on the side of the housing that go up to the transmission cooler in the bottom of the radiator. And if you look here, you can see these get really mangled. It seems like nobody ever replaces them. You can see this one's been squished down and mangled. And you really want to change these when you're working on the transmissions, particularly on trying to fix any leaks. The other one is this vacuum modulator has an O-ring. And here's the O-ring for the modulator. We're going to pull these two bolts out and pull this out, replace the seal, and put it right back in. So that's why you want to have this thoroughly clean. Now there's another area that leaks. It's not real common, but when it does, it's a real pain. And that's the shaft that controls the shift. And the O-ring is only accessible from inside the transmission by dropping the valve body. So I will not be covering fixing this particular leak. We're talking about basic leaks that you can DIY fairly easily. Now there's two other O-rings that I will show you on the other side that we're going to try to replace. This one here is the larger O-ring and that's for the fill tube that runs down and bolts right into the housing. This is a very common leak. It'll just drip out of here when it's been uh, sitting in the transmission for 40 years. But this other one here, this small one, people are having a hard time obtaining this O-ring. It's really not available. I had to special source it, and that's for the Bowden cable, and that fits right in here. This is the toughest one to replace. I generally replace it when I remove the transmission, and I will discuss in my on-demand video, the options of trying to do this with the transmission in the car. Sometimes you can do it, sometimes you cannot. There's something I should mention here, even when I'm cleaning and working around these transmissions after removing those trans cooler lines, use silicone plugs. Keep these holes plugged up while you're doing your cleaning. And on this side, I also have a banjo bolt that goes right here, and I use the other two sealing rings in the kit to replace those while I'm doing this service. This torque converter and input shaft seal is one of the more common leaks. And you'll usually discover it by seeing transmission drip right out through this grill here. And when you have this problem, you have to pull the transmission. So what I recommend is anytime you replace a transmission or have the transmission out for any other type of service or leaks, you want to replace the seal. But that's only half the challenge because the other half of the challenge is right in here where this pump housing goes into the transmission, this will leak. So if you pull your transmission and just replace this seal, you'll probably be sorry because you'll put it back in and it'll still be leaking. This has a big O-ring around it right here. And the only way to get to that O-ring is you've got to pull this plate off and remove it to get to the o-ring so this kit will include the gasket that you'll need when you put this back together 
And also in the kit, I provide this tool which will allow you to press the new seal in evenly. So you'll have to replace not only the seal, but the O-ring and the gasket when you tackle this leak here. Do not just replace the seal. I guarantee you'll be sorry. Now there are other leaks that can occur in these piston covers because there's large o-rings here and I do not cover that in my kit. Uh, you're getting into some major transmission work here and I'm trying to just limit this to easy things the DIY mechanic can do to fix some of these what I call pesky leaks. But this one here is the one that has driven me crazy for the last 25 years. The first time I tried to get this Bowden cable out of the case. I said, you gotta be kidding me. You know, I, I try to grab it and I try to, you know, pull up on it. And what happens is a lot of people try to wiggle it out. And this is what happens when you wiggle it out. These little clips here, this one is, is almost broken off. Those little clips go down and latch into the groove down underneath the top of this case. And when these break off or get weak, then this can easily come out. So there's no bolt that holds this in on these early Bowden cables. It's basically just pushed in. And when you have a new one where the plastic isn't hard, the O-ring is not old and hardened, it's fairly easy to get in. But getting these out is very difficult. You can see this one here has got a bunch of marks on the side. Probably somebody's tried to get this out in the past. So this past month... After 25 years of frustration, Jerson and I went to work to come up with a tool to get this off. And we found that you have to grab it and you have to be able to pull up on it. Well, the easiest way is to get a tool like this that you can clamp onto it. And notice we have a bolt that can allow you to tighten this down so it really clamps tight onto this. And then you use a light hammer and you just tap up on this and it just pops this right off. Slick as could be. You just tap, tap, tap and off this comes. And then when you put it back on, you know, you put a little oil on the O-ring, the new O-ring, you can generally just snap that back down. But if you can't, you can grab it with a special tool and pull it down. But I'm going to warn you that doing this with the transmission in the car is an advanced DIY job. It's easy to get it out, but it's very difficult to rehook it up in there and get it back in place, particularly with all the dirt that's in and around this area. Once again, look at how we've cleaned this area in preparation for replacing these O-rings. So my kit will include these parts right here, the basic kit. You'll have the three O-rings and the four ceiling rings and the special tool. And then if you're going to go after that front seal, that'll be a separate kit. I highly recommend if you have an old transmission that's got a bunch of little leaks, it's probably easier just to pull the transmission out of the car and fix everything with the transmission on the bench like you see here.